In this video, we're going to talk about negative resistance. What is negative resistance? What do you think it is? Well, let's briefly review Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that voltage is the product of the current and the resistance. If you rearrange the equation, dividing both sides by R, you'll get that the current is V over R. So that equation really describes current as a function of voltage. Now, if we were to plot that equation, put in voltage on the x-axis, current on the y-axis, and if we were to keep the resistance constant, we would get a graph that looks like this. It would be a straight line. And this region represents positive resistance. That's basically normal resistance that you would get in a typical resistor. As you increase the voltage, the current increases. So that's a basic attribute of positive resistance. Now what about negative resistance? What happens to the current if you increase the voltage? In this case, the current will decrease. So let's label this Let's label four different points here. We'll call this point A, B, C, and D. So between point A and B, we have a positive resistance region. When the voltage goes up, the current goes up. But between points B and C, that is a negative resistance region. Because when the voltage goes up, the current goes down. And so we see this inverse relationship between voltage and current in the negative resistance region. Now between point C and D, we have a positive resistance region because we can see a direct relationship between voltage and current. When the voltage goes up, the current goes up. Now the reverse is true as well. When the voltage goes down, the current goes down. Likewise, when dealing with negative resistance, when the voltage goes down, the current goes up. Now, there's a lot of devices that exhibit negative resistance. For instance, the tunnel diode exhibits negative resistance in this region. When the voltage goes up, the current goes down. Now, another device that is more common when, that you'll probably encounter when dealing with electronics is the NPN transistor. When connected in a certain way, you can also get negative resistance from that device, which I'm going to talk about later in this video. To get the negative resistance effect of an NPN transistor, you need to connect it in a certain way. In a typical circuit, the NPN transistor is connected like this. This is the base, this is the collector, and this is the emitter. The collector pin of the NPN transistor is typically connected towards a positive voltage source whereas the emitter typically goes to ground. And sometimes you may have an emitter resistor or a collector resistor. But nevertheless, VCE, that is the voltage of point C relative to point E, is positive. Now, in order to get the negative resistance of this device, you need to reverse the connections of the collector and the emitter. You don't need to use the base for this to work. So if you change the configuration like this, the collector and the emitter junctions will now exhibit negative resistance when a certain threshold voltage is reached. For the 2N222A transistor, that threshold voltage is approximately 7.3 volts, at least when I tested it. So I decided to do an experiment where I varied the voltage until the transistor began to conduct in the reverse direction. But first, I need to set up a voltage divider. And I could do that using two resistors. So we'll call this resistor 1 and resistor 2. Resistor 2 is going to be a 
potentiometer. So I can progressively adjust the voltage by tuning R2. Now let's call this the ground. The collector pin of the transistor will be attached to ground and the emitter will be connected between R1 and R2. Now I decided to use a 12 volt battery for this experiment and R1 was set to one kilo ohm. R2 was a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer. So here we have the emitter and here we have the collector. So I decided to measure the voltage across the emitter and the collector. And then I would have to disconnect the circuit and then measure the current flowing through the collector and the emitter region by putting an ammeter here. So that's how I would measure the current by putting the meter there. And then you would typically measure the voltage across two points, in this case, the emitter and the collector. So as I progressively increase R2 from zero to 10K, the voltage across R2 or across the emitter and the collector region of the 2N222 transistor, it progressively increased from zero to 7.3, more specifically 7.32. But that was its max. As I continued to increase R2, the voltage began to decrease from 7.32 to about 6.9. And at that point, the potentiometer reached its maximum value of 10K. Now, keep in mind that the voltage across R2, which we'll call V2, is equal to the voltage of the battery, which is 12 volts, times R2, divided by the sum of R1 and R2. So this forms a voltage divider network, with R2 controlling the voltage across the emitter and the collector of the NPN transistor. So I took my first measurement of current at a voltage of 1.9, and the current was measured to be zero milliamps. The next measurement was at 5.15 volts. So I'm progressively adjusting R2. The current was still zero. At 7.1 volts, the current flowing through the NPN transistor was still zero. But at 7.32 volts, the current was 0.1 milliamps. So somewhere around 7.3, the transistor began to conduct in the reverse direction. That is, with a current flowing from the emitter to the collector, as opposed from the collector to the emitter. Now, increasing the value of R2 from this point decreased the voltage. So I took the next measurement at 7.21 volts, and the current increased to 0.56 milliamps. Then I progressively increased the value of R2 towards 10K. And the next reading was at 7.06. And the current at that level was 1.86 milliamps. Now increasing R2 even further, the last reading that I took was 6.98 volts. And at this voltage, the current was 3.04 milliamps. So let's talk about what's happening here the transistor begins to conduct current at 7.3 volts. Below that voltage, it doesn't conduct current in the reverse direction. That is from emitter to collector. So this is, you could think of it as the breakdown voltage of the transistor when connected in this configuration. Now, once the breakdown voltage is reached, the transistor begins to conduct in the reverse direction. And as the voltage decreases across the transistor at this point by increasing R2, so first we're increasing R2, and then the voltage that we are reading as we increase R2 is actually decreasing as opposed to it increasing in this region. As the voltage decreases, notice that the current increases. The current goes from 0.1 milliamps to 3.04 milliamps, so the current is increasing. 
the voltage decreases from 7.3 volts to 6.98 volts. So notice that we have an inverse relationship between voltage and current. As the voltage goes down, the current is going up. So this is a characteristic not of positive resistance, but of negative resistance. Remember, when dealing with positive resistance, when the voltage goes up, the current goes up. Or if the voltage goes down, the current goes down. But when dealing with negative resistance, if we increase the voltage, the current should go down. Or if we decrease the voltage, the current will go up. And this is what we have here. And so that is an example of negative resistance. It occurs when you have an inverse relationship between voltage and current. Now, what are some applications of negative resistance? How can we use this in a practical scenario? Well, there's something called an Asaki oscillator, which is also known as a negative resistance oscillator, which uses this phenomenon to generate oscillations or an output where the voltage varies. And I've actually created another video on this. If you go to YouTube and type in single transistor Isaki oscillator circuit and then type in organic chemistry tutor, you should see that video come up. But I'll post some videos in the description section below so you can take a look at that as well. For those of you who might be interested in seeing how you can apply this negative resistance phenomena into making an oscillator circuit. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. And uh, thanks again for watching. Actually, before I end this video, I do want to add another experiment that I tried. Because when dealing with the voltage divider network, as you add an element to it, as you extract current from the voltage divider network, the voltage will go down. And as you extract more current, the voltage will decrease even more. And so one might assume that the inverse relationship between voltage and current might be due to the fact that we're extracting significant amount of current from the voltage divided network. So I decided to try another experiment to make sure that the negative resistance that we're seeing in the 2N2222A transistor is not due to pulling out current from the voltage divider network alone. So in this experiment, I decided to connect the transistor directly to a resistor. And so there's only one path for the current to flow. The ammeter is connected between the collector of the transistor and the negative terminal of the battery. So here we have the emitter, the collector, and the base. Now the resistor that I've used in this experiment is a 220 ohm resistor and the voltage of the battery well this is going to vary so I'm going to call this VB and I have a voltmeter connected across the emitter and the collector region which we'll call VEC the emitter collector voltage so here are the results of this experiment so we have VB VEC and the current that is flowing in the circuit. And there's only one path for this current to flow. So using three AA batteries, I've measured a voltage of 4.38 across those three batteries. VEC was 4.38 and the current flowing in the circuit was zero because the breakdown voltage of the emitter collector region has not been reached. By the way, during this experiment, I used a different 2N22222A transistor. So the breakdown voltage won't be 7.32. In this experiment, it was a little bit higher. Now, using four AA batteries, the voltage measured was 5.85. And since there's no current flowing in the circuit, VB is the same as VEC. Using five AA batteries, the voltage was 7.31. Now, because the breakdown voltage is close to this point, I decided to replace some of the old AA batteries that I was using with newer AA batteries to get a slightly higher voltage. So replacing one of the AA batteries with a newer one 
I got a voltage of 7.42. And for this particular transistor, it wasn't enough to activate the emitter and collector regions so that current will flow. But replacing another battery with a newer one, the voltage was 7.46. At this point, current began to flow. And I measured a current of 0.88 milliamps. And then continuing the same process, the next voltage across the five batteries was 7.58. VEC was 7.13, and the current increased to 2.02 .02 milliamps. Replacing another old battery with a newer one, the next voltage was 7.65, VEC was 7.10, and the current was 2.43 milliamps. When VB was set to 7.7, .7, VEC dropped to 7.07, .07, with the current going up to 2.77 milliamps. And then I used a voltage of 7.81, this went down to 7.04, and the current is now 3.32. Next, I decided to use six batteries. The voltage was 8.76, and VEC was 6.90. When I did this, I was using six older AA batteries, so that's why the voltage is less than nine but the current was 8.46 milliamps. Let me just continue in this section. Next, using seven AA batteries, VB was measured to be 10.27 and VEC was 6.82 with a current of 15.7 milliamps. And using uh, eight AA batteries, it was 11.79. This went up to 6.84, and the current increased to 22.5 milliamps. So let's talk about what's happening here. So the breakdown voltage was somewhere between 7.42 and 7.46 for this particular transistor. That is with respect to VB. But with respect to VEC, Somewhere between 7.26 and 7.42 is the breakdown voltage across those two pins of the transistor. Now, looking at the voltage as we go from 7.26 to 6.9, notice that VEC is decreasing even though we're increasing VB from 7.46 to 8.76. So during this region, as VB goes up, VEC goes down. But notice that the current is increasing. So the voltage across the emitter and the collector regions is going down, but the current is going up. So this is the negative resistance region of this transistor. We can see the inverse relationship between voltage and current. And this time, the voltage drop is not due to us pulling current out of the voltage divider network. It's a property of the transistor. Now in this region, VEC goes up from 6.82 to 6.84. Not a huge difference, but nevertheless, the current is going up. So during this region, we are no longer in the negative resistance region. So as you can see, there is a negative resistance region when connecting the NPN transistor in reverse. And for this transistor, it's somewhere between 7.4 volts and 6.8 volts. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a good introduction into negative resistance. And uh, thanks for watching.